Yemen civil war has killed thousands, and the U.S. is involved. President Trump vetoed a resolution that would have stopped that. Why? This is America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. In April, Congress passed a bipartisan resolution that would have ended U.S. support for the war in Yemen. But President Trump vetoed it. A lot of people were outraged, even though most Americans still couldn't place Yemen on a map. Go ahead, give it a go. It's here, by the way. There's a civil war going on right now in Yemen, and it's an absolute mess. According to some estimates, more than 70,000 civilians have been killed since the war began in 2015. One side in the fighting is Saudi Arabia, which is a U.S. ally. Why is the U.S. allied with a regime that, for example, tortured women for driving and allegedly killed that Washington Post journalist? Well, that's a whole nother episode. But what it means for this story is that the U.S., by proxy, is also involved in the civil war in Yemen, a country some of you didn't even realize is actually here. Since the Yemen civil war has been so bloody, earlier this year the U.S. Senate voted 54 to 46 to end U.S. involvement. They invoked the War Powers Act. It was created in 1973 in an attempt to stop the Vietnam War. You see, according to the U.S. Constitution, the president is the commander-in-chief of the U.S. armed forces, but Congress gets to declare war. But in the case of Vietnam, the president sent troops in without Congress ever declaring a war. Which is why some call it the Vietnam Conflict, and why I call the last Avengers movie Infinity Conflict. I think we can all agree that the Avengers need more congressional oversight. Anyway, the 1973 War Powers Act requires the president to tell Congress within 48 hours if he sent troops somewhere. And those troops can only be deployed for 90 days without Congress giving it the okay. But the Yemen Civil War has been going on since 2015. That's a lot more than 90 days. Honestly, it's felt more like 90 months. Anyway, Congress told President Trump to stop America's involvement in the Yemen Civil War, which he vetoed. And then it went back to the Senate, but the Senate didn't get enough votes to veto the President's veto. That's the beauty of checks and balances in action. So why does President Trump want the U.S. to stay involved in the Yemen Civil War? Is it because Trump was proving yet again that he valued good relations with despotic war criminals more than the lives of the many millions of Yemenis being starved and subjected to the most horrific conditions imaginable? Well, it's actually way more complicated than that, especially when you consider that President Trump has taken the same stance as President Obama, which is something that no one likes to hear. Now, I'm guessing you probably don't know all the ins and outs of the Yemen Civil War since many of you watching didn't realize that this is actually Yemen. Yes, for real this time. Seriously, you can look it up now. Anyway, Yemen used to be run by President Ali Abdullah Saleh. He was the type of president who stayed in power for 34 years. But the Arab Spring protests that started in Tunisia spread to Yemen in 2011, and President Saleh was forced to resign in 2012. And then real democracy came to Yemen, as Saleh's vice president, Abdraba Mansour Hadi ran unopposed for leadership of a two-year transitionary period that he never stepped down from. That is, until a Shia Muslim militant group called the Houthis, based out of the Northwest, stormed the capital. President Hadi fled to the southern port city Aden, and now Yemen has two governments and two capitals. Now you might be wondering, no offense, but why should I care? Well, because Iran. Iran decided to back the Houthis, since they're all Shia Muslims. And because of Saudi Arabia, because being Sunni Muslims, they decided to back President Hadi. And then a bunch of other countries took sides with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Kuwait, Egypt, Jordan, Senegal, Sudan, Qatar, and Morocco also backing President Hadi, though the last two did eventually pull out. So, now you have a good old-fashioned bloody civil war that involves countries across the Middle East and Africa. The most important players, of course, are Iran and Saudi Arabia. It's basically a proxy war for them. The Houthi in Yemen fired Iranian rockets into Saudi Arabia. Then Saudi Arabian airstrikes killed a bunch of Yemeni civilians, and so on and so forth. So how does the U.S. fit into the picture? Well, we have former President Barack Obama to thank. Thanks, Obama. The U.S. had been conducting drone strikes against al-Qaeda in Yemen since 2002 which actually makes it more like thanks Bush, which just doesn't have the same ring to it. But in 2015, 
President Obama authorized U.S. forces to give logistical and intelligence support to Saudi Arabia's operations in Yemen, along with military and intelligence coordination and assistance. And a recently revealed classified report shows Saudi Arabia used a lot of U.S. weapons to kill all those people in Yemen. For example, according to Human Rights Watch, Saudi Arabia began using cluster bombs made in the United States. Which makes sense. Always buy your cluster bombs proudly made in USA. But seriously, cluster bombs are pretty bad. They tend to kill a lot of civilians. And they've been banned by most countries. The Yemen Civil War has actually been pretty unpopular with both Democrats and Republicans in Congress. Even though in early 2016, while Obama was still president, the Senate rejected a bill that would have blocked more than a billion dollars in arms sales to Saudi Arabia. Now, if you think back to the War Powers Act, you might be wondering how Obama was able to provide U.S. support to Saudi Arabia for the war without congressional support. In fact, when Obama began supporting the Saudi-led war in 2015, he didn't even notify Congress in the first 48 hours. That's because he argued that the U.S. was not engaged in hostilities in Yemen because U.S. forces are not taking direct military action in Yemen in this Saudi-led effort. He argued that technically it didn't fall under the War Powers Act. And the Obama administration had used a similar argument back in 2011 to justify why limited U.S. airstrikes in Libya didn't fall under the War Powers Act either. The most beautiful part is, President Trump seems to agree with Obama. Because the Obama administration established the precedent in 2011 that consistent bombing did not rise to the level of hostilities, the Trump administration was easily able to claim that U.S. support for the Saudi-led coalition, merely refueling jets and intelligence sharing, well short of direct airstrikes, does not constitute hostilities. In Trump's statement vetoing the congressional resolution, he said, the United States is not engaged in hostilities in or affecting Yemen. Technically, that's true. The United States is merely supporting Saudi Arabia, which is engaged in hostilities affecting Yemen. And the White House argued that the congressional resolution to stop U.S. support for Saudi Arabia would interfere with the president's constitutional authority as commander-in-chief of the armed forces and could endanger our service members by impairing their ability to efficiently and effectively conduct military engagements and to withdraw in an orderly manner at the appropriate time. So Trump and Obama both agree. They also both agree about why the U.S.'s indirect involvement in Yemen is necessary, something I'm sure you're wondering about. First of all, it's the threat Iran poses to Saudi Arabia, using the Houthis in Yemen as a proxy. But it's more than that. Billions of dollars of global trade go through the Red Sea, which is here. The Egyptian economy depends on it. So does Europe, because so much shipping goes to and from Europe through the Suez Canal, which is here. Millions of barrels of oil go through it every day. If Iranian proxies control Yemen, Iran could cut off all that shipping. This is the reason why so many Middle Eastern powers joined Saudi Arabia in the Yemen Civil War. They all kind of hate Iran, and they don't want to let Iran control this important waterway. Then there's the risk to Camp Limonier, the largest U.S. military base in the region, across the waters in Djibouti. Nevertheless, a lot of civilians are being killed in the Civil War. And Saudi Arabia is not the most freedom-loving of regimes. Now, a bipartisan group of senators are trying to block more U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia, including weapons that will likely be used in the Yemen Civil War. So, is this war something the U.S. should be involved with? And what do you think of Obama and Trump's view that the U.S. action there doesn't count as hostilities? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.